All right, Brian, we're here at the end of the field and wow, we've got this problem right in the field approach. And yep. you know, in this case, it's probably compaction, but we do see this in a lot of fields across the country where it could actually be some herbicide injury killing off a little bit of the crop right in the field. Well, you know it's a herbicide injury when it starts off bad and it gets better, 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 and all of a sudden there's no problem. So with all these sprayers that are out there, we talk to farmers all the time about getting good spray tank clean out, and we wanna run through with you today what our steps are for the right spray tank clean out. And you know what? There probably never is a 100% guarantee that you know every last little drop is out of there of any product you've used in the past you just have to use your head be very diligent when you are cleaning out spray tanks but let's run through what we would recommend to a farmer okay well first of all why are we seeing more issues this year it's because we're tank mixing in more products now if you had roundup resistant corn and roundup resistant soybeans and that's all you're spraying and you're just spraying roundup yeah maybe you got by for 10 years or even more with no issues whatsoever and you say wow i never had an issue and this year i I did, well guess what? Roundup isn't killing all the weeds anymore in most of our country. So guys are having to tank mix something else and probably a pretty strong rate of something else to pick up Roundup resistant mare's tail, or Roundup resistant giant ragweed, or Roundup resistant pigweed, something like that. So when we've got products like that that are very crop specific, where it's, it's good to use in corn, but in soybeans it's gonna hurt things. Well, those types of products need to be cleaned out well that's why we're seeing more issues this year. Okay, so one of the most important things you can do on your farm is try to drain your sprayer out completely every single night. The more you allow pesticides to sit in your spray tank overnight, especially if you have poly tanks and rubber hoses or any type of poly line that you've got, that's not good. Even spray nozzles I can think of that could be poly. So yes, if it was all stainless steel, you've got a lot less risk. And that oh. may be something you might wanna to go to in the future too. Okay, well there's a couple of things there, Brian. And when you leave something sit overnight or even for just a few hours unexpectedly, maybe you have a breakdown in the field and you have to go get some parts and all of a sudden it ends up being a four or six hour project, you know, you're going to have a couple of things. One, you're going to have some settling out. So you had a product like atrazine, for example, that you had mixed in. Now that atrazine settles out and you're going to have problems with it could cake up in certain spots or get to those small little hard to get to places. So that's going to be one thing. The other thing is maybe you're spraying for grass or volunteer corn and using a product like Select. Well, Select happens to be a fantastic tank cleaner and you know what? So does Roundup. And when guys were out spraying for volunteer corn and their soybeans this year with Select and Roundup, all of a sudden we were pulling things out of the pores in that poly tank or out of that rubber hose. Now we've got some of our corn herbicides that we were applying a week ago. And guys said, well, wait a minute. Now, if that was gonna happen, shouldn't it happen in my very first tank? No, not necessarily. We had a number of farmers this year that sprayed 1,000 or 2,000 acres of that and it worked just fine. And then all of a sudden they had that breakdown or they had that day that it got windy and they left a half a tank of spray sit for a day or two in your sprayer and it just started pulling things out. Okay, so it's not just the pulling things out. It's also the fact that it can actually get into the pores. So if you do have the breakdown or you don't clean your spray tank out every night, then product is gonna get into the pores of this poly and eventually that's gonna get sucked out by something else. So what we want it to get sucked out by is tank cleaner. So our suggestion for you, again, is make sure you're draining out your tank every night. If, if at all possible, we wanna absolutely do that. Then in terms of how you're going to clean that tank out, we talk very often about triple rinsing. I think that's a great thing, but just make sure when you're actually triple rinsing, you're triple rinsing everything. In other words, when you've got that big poly tank, how about the top of that tank. I mean, not the outside, but the inside top of that tank. A lot of times, ag chemicals will splash up there. And, or there'll be foam yep. and that foam will stick on the top of the yep, tank. Yep, something will happen, but you've got to clean out there. You've got to clean out in the boom, maybe even the spray nozzles. I mean, you've got to really, really be thorough. And the other thing that we like to do is let spray tank cleaner sit in the tank overnight. In other words, fill your tank completely up with water and spray tank cleaner and let that spray tank cleaner suck out anything that might be in the pores of that tank. Okay, now when we talk about tank cleaner, one of the things that I like about, we use a product called Inside Out, but there's a number of good tank cleaners out there on the market. When we're using a tank cleaner, we want something that'll not only pull things out of those pores and, and clean that residue off the sides of the tank, 
but it's got to be able to keep it in solution. Because let's say you use household ammonia, for example. There's a lot of guys that say, oh, I'm just going to use some household ammonia. That's fine. And it does a nice job cutting stuff off the side of the tank. The problem is when you're using household ammonia, a lot of those chemicals you're mixing with are just going to sit on the top of the tank. It's going to float on the top, kind of like oil on water. And now when you drain that tank out, well, what happens to that oily residue? It just sits right back on the side of the tank again. So you need to use a tank cleaner that's gonna keep that in solution. That way when you do cut it off the sides of the tank, you can actually get it out of the tank too. So again, the most important thing is making sure you're triple rinsing, uh, that you're using spray tank cleaner, that you let the spray tank cleaner sit there overnight. And every time you're spraying any products out, try to, if at all possible, drain your tank completely down so no herbicide, no pesticide whatsoever is sitting in that tank at all. Okay, Brian, I've investigated a lot of these issues that happened to guys this summer, and many of them didn't happen in the tank, they happened in the boom. Guys would do a right. good job cleaning that tank out, but they'd forget about flushing out that boom. And even at the ends of the boom, what guys would forget about is, hey, you know what, my last nozzle is here, but a few inches over is the end of the boom. And there is a cap there that you can take off. Yep. And some of the guys, when they took that cap off, maybe they were spraying a Laudus or a Callisto or Atrazine or, or one of these products in corn, and they took that end cap off finally, and they realized, oh man, there's a plug that's about like a silly putty or something in the end of my boom that I just wasn't able to get out. And once I took that plug off, I could completely clean it out. And when you left some Roundup or, or one of these products in soybeans out there overnight, what well, was just eating away at that little plug of stuff at the end of yep. the spray boom? Let me give you one other example. I had a farmer who said, boy, I shouldn't have any problems. I've got a stainless steel tank. I said, yep, you do have a stainless steel tank, but are your lines stainless steel? Uh, no, they're rubber hose. Well, there you go. That's where your problem was. It's easy to clean out that stainless steel tank, but you got to be thinking the stainless steel tank, that's not it. You've still got pesticide in all that spray boom in any hose that's going and around out there. the tips it, yep. around the filters yep. all those things i mean it doesn't really take that much time to take it off you say oh man it's going to take forever no it really doesn't take that much time especially if you do it at the end of the day you let stuff soak overnight and you're pretty good and the next here's day. one other thing a lot of farmers are going to a lot of guys have more and more acres all the time like us on our farm this year we used two different sprayers we had one on beans one on corn you know what we didn't have to clean out at all. All right, Brian. Now, now you not only have to buy one spray, you have to buy two <laughs> if you're going to farm Brian's way. That's going to get expensive. Easier, though, <laughs> well, you, you probably need two sprayers if you have our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 